Welcome to Hit Points Gaming. If you are new here, I am Corey and this is my wife Andrea and today we are going to be starting a brand new campaign of Madara. He's been waiting for this for a long time and it came in the mail and I said, when are we going to finish Gloomhaven? <laughs> uh, okay, and he said, nope, we're going to start this I've been instead. trying to finish Gloomhaven for a long time with you, but you've been... Um, I've been under the weather for quite a while. So uh, the good news about that is that um, Corey had some time when the game came to not only learn the rules, but also to start painting all of the amazing characters um, that we have. So you're going to see some of that today just to make everything a little bit more... Yeah, it's nice. So you're not going to be staring at, you know, gray tokens. I mean, the, the gray figures. So some of the heroes are painted, um, some of the monsters. I don't, I don't really know which ones gonna, we're going to be encountering, uh, but I, I did have some time to start that. Mm -hmm. We did play the uh, crawl mode. So Madara is, uh, there's two different ways to play the game. There's a, what's called a crawl mode, which is scenario driven, but there's shorter scenarios, maybe two to three hours each. And I think there's five main overall stories or scenarios and different sections. So we started with one just to kind of teach ourselves teach how ourselves. to play. Exactly. Yeah. And to learn about the characters. Right. But what we're going to do for you today is we're going to start the actual adventure mode. So this is, uh, oh God, what else would we do? Well, but the campaign, this is the giant book story of act one unintentional malium. Okay. We're only going to need two games for the rest of our lives. Dara <laughs> and Gloomhaven. That's it. Until Kingdom Death comes back out. Oh, gosh. Until, until that comes how back How many out. years do we have? A year? Uh, until we, it comes we got out? a while. We got okay. a while. So, okay. um, yeah. Like I said, if, if you're new to us, what we do here is we like to play campaign story games or that legacy style games. That are preferably cooperative. Yes. 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 Um, so, uh, we're each going to play as two characters. Yes. Okay. And uh, I will say, after playing the crawl scenario, mm -hmm. I got even more excited. Yes. I thought the rules and everything just were exceptional. And um, hey. I'll be explaining the rules as we play through okay. the game so we get a better understanding. And I will, I will say this. There will be, of course, spoilers in this game because we're going through the actual story. But what's really sharp about this game is... There's different branching narratives. So depending if we win or lose a scenario, the story may change, and it may be different than what you're experiencing if you're playing the game as well. And we'll keep playing the game um, as long as we don't come into, a, I think, a game over condition. So I believe there's a way to actually get a game over. I, I don't know how that is, but there, we might come across something that says it. I, I don't know. What, like if we all fall down a pit or something? Maybe, because I know if we all yeah. get defeated, it, a different story happens. Oh. So I don't know. Maybe okay. there's a game Exciting. over this. And as long as, obviously, viewers want us to keep playing, right? So what we're going to say here, if you enjoyed this first episode, definitely leave a thumbs up, and we'll do a second episode if we get 30 likes. Mm -hmm. Let's just start off small. Let's see if we can get there to see if you guys enjoy it. Uh, some other things that I want to mention about this playthrough, uh, and, and really this game in general, uh, that I'm excited about is uh, one thing that's really sharp is, which is different than Gloomhaven. We get a decoder. Yeah, like if you can see here, which you probably can't, uh, there's like this red text on all these hidden things that happen throughout the story. And you have a decoder that you put it over when things happen, and that's when you can read to see what happens. Because I know in Gloomhaven, I was always like, you would have to hide like what you and were I getting would and the choices. And I just kind of move my fingers and take a look at it. Something small like that, I think, is, is sharp. Yeah. It Definitely makes it true. different than any yeah, than anything else we have. Yeah, 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 exactly. And there was something else I wanted to bring up. Totally forgot what I was gonna say. But I'm sure as the cool <laughs> things happen I will definitely point them out to you. Well, uh, what I the, like a lot about this after doing the first um, scenario was the colors. Everything is very, very colorful. I don't know, I'm, I'm very visu a visual person. All of the colors are like bright, yeah, cool dice. Different Even the colors. Dice. Dice. The um, dice look, they're all different colors. Yeah, so I think that sets it apart from other games. Um, a completely different color palette. Yeah, yeah. And hence why I wanted to, to start painting because the tiles and everything, as you'll see, they, they really pop. They mm -hmm. shine, just the way the tiles are. And the different. Oh, yeah, the one thing mm -hmm. I want to point out. Mm -hmm. 
uh, these things called totems, which I'll oh. I'll go. Oh, okay. Oh, right. bringing that up kind of early, but okay, totems. Yeah, it's cool. As you're going through the scenario, when you set it up, uh, as soon as you draw a line of sight to, they're called totems, something happens. So there's a passage that we're going to read, and then either guys spawn or something. That's how the, the story moves forward without you knowing. Yeah, the boards what's start happen. pretty empty, besides a couple of barriers, maybe, a couple of totems. Um, so you really are left in the dark. Yeah. Until. That first one is revealed, and maybe monsters will come out. Maybe they won't. Uh, something else happens. Yep. And there's so. a whole actual separate book that you'll look into. They say these are called diagram, the diagram book. So the the board itself may evolve and uh, more tiles may come out, and you don't know. Yep. That's why you're gonna look in this whole separate book. So really cool, keeping us in the dark as we play throughout. We we experience that in the crawl mode. It's like wow, I didn't even think this was. Or the game was like happen. twice as long as we thought. Yeah. yeah. Really sharp, really sharp. The last thing I will point out, and the one thing that I wanted to wait a little bit for this campaign to come out, is uh, really the, just the story in general. It's a huge story, right? And there's a lot of narrative in this. You love your stories. I, absolutely. Um, the one thing that I, I'm horrible at, actually, sometimes is reading the stories. So, I'm horrible at doing voices, <laughs> yeah. so I'm really excited for this game. So there's actually an audio app. Uh, the app's not currently out yet for Android, but we can download the sound files. Yeah, we have we have Androids. So we're going to um, be uh, sharing the story with you during different clips at, through the episodes as they play out. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on. Like the first one's like six or seven minutes long, the actual story. So. You don't have to listen to us stumble over words that we don't know. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> Um, as I mentioned, as we go through the game, I'll kind of go over the rules. We'll show you each of our characters at a certain point. But I think right now, let's start things off mm -hmm. uh, with, with the first story. With the story. Yeah, yeah let's go, go to the audio. We'll be right back. Chapter 1. Before the Mast. Nightingale crept almost silently through the crowd, eyes fixed on her target. There were at least a hundred of her fellow students here, thronging about and chatting excitedly in their teams of four. Her victim wasn't watching anything but the cigarette in his fingers. He didn't stand a chance. Air rushed around Nightingale as she jumped, latching onto Zeke's back with both arms like a monkey around a tree. Zeke! Her voice came out somewhere between a squeal and a screech, loud enough that a few nearby students turned to stare. Her friend grunted and spluttered, the cigarette tumbling away from his mouth. You trying to kill me? Nightingale dropped to the ground behind him. You don't need my help for that. She extinguished the still smoldering cigarette with a well-placed step. You've been here as long as I have. Two years away from Earth and you're still poisoning yourself. Zeke only grinned in response. It also makes you smell terrible, someone said from behind them. They both turned and Nightingale's eyes widened as she saw her sister Shayla standing there. Nightingale was usually thrilled to see her, but today was different. Today, Shayla was one of the proctors on the most important test of their new lives, the Magical Aptitude and Skill Test, or the MAST for short. Makes me smell terrible, Zeke scoffed. See, here I was expecting something like, it's so good to see you, Zeke. Or maybe, how'd you do on your written exams? You know, friend stuff. No favoritism today, Shayla said. She sounded stern, but she was grinning at them as she flipped through a few pages on a worn clipboard. Oh, but look at that. Lucky you. Looks like you two ended up together. What a surprise, Nightingale smiled and shared a look with Zeke. Consider that the only luck you get today, Shayla's commented quietly. Nightingale looked around, wondering who their other partners would be. Of course, she and Zeke would be in a group together. She knew why Shayla's didn't want to broadcast it, though, although students would be quick to pick up on any nepotism. While Nightingale knew each one of the students around them, the really short girl with multicolored eyes, the kid with the strange goat-like hooves instead of feet, None of them were actually friends. Each team has four people, Zeke said. Who are the other two? Rook, Lars, and Remy. Moretti. Shalis frowned at the clipboard for a moment, then shrugged and tucked it away under one arm. You need me to point them out? Nah, we're good. Zeke rested one hand briefly on Nightingale's shoulder, pointing towards the single largest student in the room. I see Rook there. If you're not already, get acquainted. I've only got another few teams to assign before I explain everything. 
Shayless walked away, vanishing effortlessly into the crowd. Guess it makes sense. Rook's got to be the smartest student here and the best fighter in our class, Zeke said. They started walking towards him, Nightingale leaving it to Zeke to clear a path for them. She lowered her voice so that the other students nearby couldn't hear her. Sure, Rook makes sense. Remy, though? Isn't her dad some kind of mafioso? Who thought it was a good idea to pair someone like that with royalty? Couldn't make it look like favoritism, I'd bet, so they pick us a boat anchor to balance out our shared awesomeness, Zeke shrugged. Every team has four. So long as she doesn't slow us down, we'll be fine. It looked like the other half of their team was already assembled. Rook was easily doubled the size of Nightingale, with hands like hammers and a beard like a lion. Hey, Zeke, Rook called. They met with a bone-cracking embrace. Remy stood just behind him, arms folded awkwardly in front of her. She looked up, smiling politely and extending a hand. Hey, I guess we're together for the test, Princess Nightingale Arson, ma'am. Remy peered at Nightingale through impressive multicolored dreadlocks. Her massive owl-like wings folded behind her, making Remy's small frame look a little bigger. Just Nightingale, she corrected Remy, taking the offered hand. The title gets old quick. You're Remy, right? Yeah. Remy looked past her, up to the gigantic rook who was still talking with Zeke. I know I'm probably not the sort of teammate you were hoping for. Nightingale blushed, unable to meet her eyes. Had Remy somehow overheard her talking to Zeke on the way over? She didn't get a chance to respond because at that moment her sister stepped up onto a raised platform at the edge of the hall and started shouting, All right, listen up, everyone. They did. Shayla smiled. Welcome to the Magical Aptitude and Skill Test. If any of you have doubts about your ability to complete the mast, the door's right there. She gestured behind them all, towards the towering double doors that led into the castle's main hall. A few stern teachers stood there, their armor polished and their weapons sharp. You will be required to go through the Acerbis, the Academy's training dungeon. The Acerbis is the real deal. Don't think the force fields of the bellicose cubes make up for stupid mistakes, because they don't. These monsters will kill you if you're not careful. There were a few seconds of silence. Nobody left, and Shayless's expression grew more intense. All right, we're going to walk through the doors behind the armory. Each of you was entitled to one pack of supplies. Choose wisely. If you get halfway through the test before you realize you didn't bring something important, too bad. She paused waiting for her statement to sink in. If you have any last questions, ask either me or another proctor before you get into the dungeon. Once the test starts, you'll only get my help if things go very wrong. She raised her voice, glancing once around the room. For the sake of your grades, you do not want our help. There were no questions. Shayla's turned, hopping off the edge of the platform. Please follow me to the armory. All right, so we were just granted our st- starting gear items, and I will start with Nightingale Arson. This is who I'm going to play as. Uh, she has uh, different weapons. I've got this long sword with this magic talisman, so basically I'm like a, a melee fighter that can cast some spells. Uh, I've got my armor and defensive cord. You'll see how that all comes into play, play how I get um, uh, additional um, bonuses to dodging and increase my defense. And then we have some consumable items here. So basically a juice box that can allow you to regain some health and an MF Fortitude, which is going to allow you to gain SP points, which are basically your action points. So uh, real quick, every turn you're going to be awarded different action points. So each of our characters is going to get three action points per turn. You can have up to five max. You're going to spend these tokens to perform, obviously, different actions. Basically, one to move, two to perform an attack, uh, and then additional ones to either cast spells or maybe do some, uh, some more advanced um, um, abilities. Uh, she does start with one uh, ability card here, and this is called Gore Shot. This is going to allow me to basically cast a magic damage spell, and if I'm successful, I do damage, of course, to an enemy. And what's different with magic is it uh, ignores any of their defense. Next, I'm going to be Zeke. Zeke is actually um, uh, has an arranged marriage with Nightingale in the realm of Madara, but he feels that she's more of a sister to him. So, like, they're really best 
best friends from what I can tell right now. So he basically has two swords that he starts with. He's got this uh, really sweet jacket as his defense. Um, and he's got some throwing knives that I can, I can toss out and do some direct damage to an enemy. But as they're discarded, I don't get, to, uh, I don't get them back. I would have to pay for them. Uh, and every item, as you see, has like a gold cost. I think it's four gold to get some, some throwing knives back. Uh, Zeke's ability, uh, once per turn, he can reroll a failed dodge roll, or reroll his dodge roll. And his power over here, Blade Works, I can exhaust this card. So basically once per um, turn, if I have two single-handed weapons, I can perform an attack. So instead of spending two action points to attack, I can actually just tap this card. Next up are my characters, uh, starting with Remy Moretti, which I think is the best character in the game. I might be biased. She actually came from Earth when she was 21, and her father, Amadara, is kind of the head of the mafia, I Whoa. guess you would say. Um, but she's remained innocent, and he's kept her from it, but she picked up a couple of, like, um, lock-picking skills and sne sneaking skills that make her good. Um, her special, if you couldn't have guessed it already, is flying. There's some pretty deep pits uh, in the caves that we're going to go in or dungeons we're going to go in. And that ability allows her to jump over all of them. Um, she is bringing throwing knives in a juice box. And her weapon, I think, is the coolest out of my two. It's a war axe. And along with it, her special power is hammer hell. And it gives her an extra damage. Um, using that war axe. Yeah, it's just a passive, right? Always plus one damage. Yeah, which cool. I think is really cool. Um, okay, last we have the overachiever, Rook Lars. He's um, brawny and brainy, I guess you could say. Which I don't have to say is pretty cool. The very big, beefy guy is the smartest. He's the smartest. He's the smartest. I guess we're all starting in school. Mm -hmm. And he's the smartest guy, and he, you know, he was put to study with Zeke. Zeke was supposed to be his mentor, I guess, and they became friends, and he uh, quickly caught up. So, um, as you might have guessed, it he has two very large um, melee attack war hammers. Uh, he's got some cool sunglasses that um, gives him an upgrade when we do conviction rolls. You'll get you'll get to see that. And his two consumables, one helps um, healing, and the other one remove an effect. Oh, I guess if someone gets like a poison, poison effect or something, or yeah. Mm -hmm. And then his special power, he's actually on top of all of that, he's like the healer. He gets to start off, um, well, for an action, he gains two heal tokens. And if he uses them on someone else, he actually gets more actions out of it, so it's a benefit to give to somebody else. The armory was well stocked, and none of them would go into the dungeon wanting. After selecting their gear, they made their way to an old freight lift that was operated with pulleys and ropes. There was only enough room on the lift for the four of them, and no pesky safety features like rails. A burly proctor Nightingale recognized as an archery instructor stood just behind the lift. Someone keep a hand on the rope at all times, he warned. If you let go, the fall will kill you. Got it, Rook answered. He was the first to climb aboard, taking hold of the control rope with one gigantic fist. The rest of them followed him aboard, and they started down. This is going to be awesome, Nightingale looked down at the firefly lights of the glowstones illuminating the carved stone patterns of the dungeon below. Even if it's a trial dungeon, it's about time we get out of the classroom, Zeke nodded. I just can't wait to graduate. We're so close to becoming real citizens. No more lectures, no more exams. Remy shuffled near the edge of the lift, her wings twitching a little in the slight breeze. Yeah, she said, her voice barely a squeak in the dark. Shayless was waiting at the bottom of the lift, in a cavernous room cut from rough stone. Several passages opened away in all directions. Down some of the tunnels, lights were trailing away, and voices were echoing as groups set out on their separate paths. You ready, little sis? Shayless gestured down a dark hallway. That one's yours. I'm ready. Nightingale drew her weapon and raised it enthusiastically. Nothing down there stands a chance. I'm sure it doesn't. Shayla smiled and reached out, wrapping one arm around Nightingale in a quick hug. Shayla's turned, meeting each of their eyes slowly. Take care of each other. 
Your team shares one grade, so your citizenship depends on it. With a nod, she tugged on the rope, and at once the rickety elevator started to rise. Good luck! Zeke waved at her as she disappeared. He turned and headed towards the indicated pathway. His expression wilted as he got his first look at what waited for them. Damp stone, thick cobwebs, and the smell of decay. Let's get this over with. They left the first room behind, the sound of squeaking metal pulleys fading into the distance. The stone was thick here, too thick to hear what any of the other groups might be doing. Soon enough, they were left with nothing but their own footsteps and the light of their glowstones. They didn't have far to go before they reached the first of the bellicose cubes. It was a small relic, only about a foot across, and set into the stone wall of the cavern. Intricate carvings of cruer magic pulsed with red lights as they neared the basin at the front. I always hate using these things, though I guess they've kept me safe in a couple of sparring matches. Remy frowned down at the cube as she approached it. It's better than getting killed, Rook stated. I bet the proctors put them here so that they have time to intervene if we're defeated by monsters, or if we suffer an otherwise fatal fall. Just make sure to attune yourself with it. Without putting in your blood, it won't protect you. Attuned or not, fighting will still hurt, Zeke added. I broke an arm while learning to use a sword. Guy cheap-shotted me. Rook nodded in agreement. Zeke's right. I've broken other students' arms while learning to use a sword. He smiled at Zeke and then got serious. Seriously, though, the cube will let us survive very serious wounds. But it doesn't make us invulnerable. Don't be an idiot. Nightingale winced as she cut her hand along the blade of her weapon, just deep enough that a few drops of blood welled up in her palm. A few drops fell from her pale fingers into the bowl. One by one they struck and boiled away, and the glow of the cube grew much brighter. For just a moment, she felt as though all the blood in her body was being tugged towards the cube. The strange sensation passed, and she got out of the way. They all took their turns before they could finally advance into the encroaching gloom. All right, so that is the full story. Uh, we've, like I said, we've got our gear ready, and we appear down uh, in these caves, and now there's a little extra blurb that we read out and then I'll explain what's on the board. This is called the mass day, day one. The damp cold air of the cave chills you to the bone. As your eyes adjust to the dark, you see the faint outline of a large rock blocking the path up ahead. It looks as if a strong push could send the boulder careening into the pits on either side of it. In any case, it looks like the only way forward. All right, so we set up the entire map. There's three tiles right here. Um, we have a certain designated area where we can start our characters. You'll see on the board there's outline of red. That's going to be... Um, um, uh, Dangerous terrain? Uh, in impassable terrain. Oh, impassable. So we can't, okay. we can't line of sight blocks that. You can't move through it. The green outline is uh, hinder terrain. So when you move out of that, it's basically difficult. It costs two movement points to move out of it. Okay. Also, if you attack in or through it, it's like a minus one to your attack roll. Okay. Okay. Then we have these giant pits that you were referring to before. Yeah. Um, you have a, an option to try to jump over them by making a skill check. So we'll see if that comes into play. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you fail, you fall and you're defeated. So we want to kind of stay away from those giant pits. That's why I like Remy so much. Right. You can just fly right over it. Yeah. Here's the immovable object, or I guess we can move it. Yes. Uh, it's a special terrain token that we put there. If we're next to it, we spend one uh, action point, SP point, and uh, you roll a skill check. And how that works is you're going to roll two purple dice. Uh, the dice have different symbols and, of course, numbers on them. You add the numbers here, add it to your strength, which yours is a six. As Rook, Rook. It, Rook is the toughest, yes, as you may have guessed. If it's a 10 or more, we can move that one space, and if we happen to move it off into the pit, it's gone, okay? Then we also have two totems. This is what I mentioned about earlier, mm -hmm. because right now, there's no bad guys on the board, right? I like it. Uh, which is good, but as soon as we can draw a line of sight to one of these totems, we stop the turn, we interrupt the turn, even if it's in between movement, mm -hmm. and then we read what happens, and maybe guys spawn, maybe something else happens, who knows? And then we have one blue encounter down here, and then we have the exit token. Now, there's a win and lose condition for this scenario. Uh, the win condition is an adventurer ends their turn on the blue exit. Oh, so there's just one. Just one person is going to be there. Uh, the lose condition is if we all get defeated. Got it. Okay. 
Uh, the other thing that we have to pay attention to, uh, we're getting graded specifically in this mission. Because again, we're, we're, in, in we're in school. Like yeah. This is a dungeon. Uh, this actually reminds me of, uh, of an anime episode um, from Naruto where we're all like students mm -hmm. and this is our first main test. We're, we're a group of four people that go out and uh, yeah, we get graded, which is, which is pretty sharp. I do like that part of it. Okay. Uh, so we get graded on how quickly we get through this dungeon. Okay, so every round we have to we have to make a marker and we get points for however many we, we get done. Uh, we also get additional points for defeating cave sickles, which are going to probably be the monsters, monsters. that we're going to run into. And um, we also lose points if any of our heroes are defeated. All right. Okay. Okay. So we have initiative tokens for each of our characters right now. I'm going to have you shuffle these and lay them out, and that's going to be the turn order. The yeah. first cooperative game we ever played together was Mice and Mystics, and that's why I was smiling because that's the, really the only other time we've had initiative cards. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. They they took a really good element from a bunch of games that we played, which was. Are you great. good? Do you feel good? Yeah, I feel great. Okay. Oh, that's horrible. Remy's first. No, that's fine. Remy's first, and then Rook. Oh, I shuffled these really good. And then Nightingale, and then Zeke. Okay. Now, there is a new variant rule that they just announced where every round you could reshuffle these cards. We're not going to do that, only because every turn we're shuffling. Um, you know, we kind of want to make this as streamlined as possible. Of course, this video is probably going to be pretty long anyway. Mm -hmm. But we like to edit out a lot of the downtime. So this is one thing that we are, we are not going to do. We're just going to keep the order that came out. Because I think there are going to be ways where you can move up on the list or the initiative track or how monsters come in. So the original way is the way that we're going to go about it. So uh, starting with Remy, the first round, we all got our three um, SP points. Yes. Right? Uh, now you can move once for one action, one SP point, you can move. Everyone's movement is technically six because that's the stats on our card, except for Rook. Rook, because he has weapons that are called heavy, have a heavy keyword, or they're called tags in this game, it reduces his movement by one. Yes. And actually, Remy has an extra movement point because of the armor oh. that she's wearing. So she gets seven, Rook gets five, the other two characters are at six. Oh, right. My occult shirt gives oh, us... Oh, you get... I have one, too. Oh, so seven. Which is pretty sharp. They're actually the same thing, but different artwork. I like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got the nice black one. You get the... The risque one, I guess. I'm not uh, so yeah, it gives us an extra movement, and we can exhaust this to dodge yes. if someone attacks us. So Okay, well, I from. don't know. Do you want me to trigger the totem in the so, first round? Right, so this totem right here will trigger, because it's center to center, as soon as someone steps on this space. Okay, now here's the thing, too. Okay, uh, we're kind of racing against another clock. So every turn... If a monster doesn't perform what's called a true action, which you'll see when that happens, yes. or a monster does not spawn, we have to put like a, another time, like an hourglass counter into play. If four of them ever come into play, we automatically lose. So it's a way to force us to progress the story without just sitting back and healing or, or doing, or like kind of manipulate the game. Mm -hmm. And there's no monsters on the board. Okay, well with that in mind, I think I'm going to move forward with Remy. Yeah, because, of course, we want Rook to kind of run up here and be the one to shove this. Yeah, but. so uh, you can't move diagonal. Right. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to go six. And trigger it. Trigger it, and then we'll move to the side. Well, it's going to be because you have seven movement points yes. for one point. Yes. Okay. Now, when you leave that space, it's going to cost an additional two. Oh. Ugh. Okay, and here's the thing. If we want Rook to get up there, he's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, I have to move out of that one, space. One, two, three, four. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it this turn. Maybe just have Remy stand back and have, you know, have her come over here without triggering seeing it. Okay. So then Rook, because he's going next, right? Yes. So he can stand here, trigger the event, and then next turn he can just run right, right up. Okay, so she's only spending one action. One action. Because we can save the two to for the next five, round, right. the next time we can have five, which is good. And we went this way, so it never triggered this. Right. Okay. Okay, Rook, his one, 
one, two, three, four, five, as you may have guessed. Mm -hmm. Let's turn her to the side. All right. Okay. Best part. This Our is literally the best part. first hidden totem revealed. As you approach the boulder in your path, a scurrying sound echoes from the other side of the chasm. Spawn two cave sickles on any normal terrain space adjacent to the blue totem. Your heart sinks as you hear skittering coming from behind you as well. You whirl around to find yourself facing two more cave sickles. Spawn two cave sickles on an on any unoccupied normal terrain space on the south side of tile UM1, UM11, which I'm south guessing side. is yeah. ours. So spawn it next to Rook so he can attack it. Oh. Because I still have two actions. Well, you're going to have to move, you know, how are you going to get to him? He's going to be too far away. On any normal space. It doesn't say on the south side, touching the south side of it. Oh, I didn't, I didn't read it like I that. I was paying touching. attention as you were reading it. On any unoccupied normal train space on the south side of the tile. Yeah, and this is north, so okay. yeah, it, it's just out of range. So I would actually put them back here, so and then wait. these guys can go. Okay. Okay. Sure. So... That introduces our first monster here. Okay, these are called cave sickles. Okay. All right. Now, um, at the top here, it tells you how many cave sickles are technically well for this card. How many are spawned? So we have spawned four of them. Yes. Right. So you follow the numerical order. So the first one's red, then purple, then orange, and then there's another card. Another card. My card. Blue, green, and pink. Right. So that's going to allow us to um, determine basically how they activate. Okay, right. so we're each going to put this in front of us, and then we can mark the health for each one of them. Yes. Okay. Now the cave sickles. You okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. I got to move this down so that the cave sickles are on camera. Okay. Now what happens is we need to roll for their initiative of when they come into play. Okay. Okay. So this is rook. So what's going to happen is you're going to roll the black die. Okay. Okay, and then depending on what you determine, so this is for the cave sickles one to three activate. One Four. shield. So one shield. So it comes after you and then one shield down. So he activates here. Okay. And then roll again for four through the six. One. Two. Two shields. So one here and then one two. Okay. So now this is going to be the order that they activate it. Got it. Alright? Okay. So the cave sickles, they are basically um, a swarm. I think there's a keyword on here. Do you see a keyword swarm? Yeah, top right hand oh. corner. It says swarm. So the only thing that's different with these guys is normally when you kill a monster, you're going to get a loot token or a loot card, a combatant loot card. Here's our basically our loot deck. But we don't get a full card until it's the last guy um, of the set. You know what I mean? Three. So if we kill the red, purple, and orange, we'll get one. But if we just kill the, the blue teal, one. we'll get one. So actually, why don't we do this? Let's put the teal near it. So hopefully we can kill that one and get it. Because as guys spawn, if we have to spawn more, we just, again, we go numerical. So if we can kill the one, let's see if we can. Okay. Let's see if we can do we that. Hello. Yes. Hi. You're going to help us? She's excited about the cave sickles. All right. Uh, and then we'll go over basically how they work when they when they activate. So that was Rook's turn. And let's just take a step back when we do movement. You technically only get one move action. So basically you spend one movement, one SP point to get yes. your full movement. But then you can push. You can just keep going, meaning you can spend more SP points. And they give you two more additional movement, movement. points. Okay. Uh, so you stop. Well, you don't really stop there. That's the end of your movement, but That's you saw this movement. blue, so this goes away. Yes. Uh, so you could continue going, um, or you just... <clears throat> I don't think I will. I think kind of hang out there. Yeah. All right. So now next is Nightingale. So she's the one that has seven movement, right? Okay. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I can get up there and start attacking. I think, okay. I think I'm going to do it. Or... You know, I could have wait to Zeke, but then 
they're all going to yeah. move and do something. So she can move up there and, and get an attack in at least. Okay. I'm going to do it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe she should be facing the uh, yeah, probably. the monsters. That'd be pretty helpful. Let's right, so start. So. Now, we did learn during the crawl, when we played this before, uh, they get stronger the more guys that are around them. Right? Oh, boy, do they ever. Uh, yes. Yeah. So now that they're, they're kind of separate, I don't think they're going to be as bad. And it would probably be more beneficial if Zeke actually went in because he has the ability to dodge and, and dance around by getting attacked by two. But I really don't want them to get and a two, both attacks. Yeah, attacks. In. Um, well, I don't know. Is she gonna be able to, she's not going to be able to one-shot this guy. She's not. And you know what? Zeke could actually kill somebody because he has blade works. Okay. So does she, instead of going there, move like... Up behind. Over here somewhere. Maybe. Then they'll both come out, and then we can get a bunch of attacks in. Rather than being stuck here, because guess what? If we're she here... She's the only one. That yeah, can I'm not going to be able to... Yeah. So how about she just moves? Okay. Two, three, four, five, six. I'll just hang out here. Okay. Okay? So I'll spend the one, because then I can keep some of my SP points to use later Next for turn. dodging, even. Oh, dodging, right. Okay. So I'll end my turn there. Um... Hmm. Actually, I was going to say, I could cast this gore shot. I can cast this spell attack. From how many spaces? Um, I think you just need line of sight here. Oh, I think it's going to be your, your um, SOI. So it's called Sphere, Sphere of Influence. But you can't break up your movement. So like I can see the cave spider here. And I would shoot. You can't see this one here. Oh, I could see the orange one. Yeah. But I would only do two damage to it. Oh. So it's not going to kill it, so I'm not even going to worry. Okay. I'm just going to keep my two. Man, her wings are in the way. Okay. There we go. Oh, you're not even paying attention. She's chasing the wrong... No, she's looking at the spider. Oh, right, because you were looking at the wall before. Right. Okay. So now we're going to go to the first cave spider, which is the ones that I'm controlling. Sickle. Cave, what did I say? Spiders? Spider. I'm yeah. afraid of spiders, that's why. Cave sickles. Okay, so uh, if anyone's played uh, Imperial Assault or the co op version of Descent by Fantasy Flight, you'll be very familiar with how these true false statements occur to, to kind of like automate how the bad guys activate. So you start at the very top and then you, of course, go down. In every true condition, you're going to perform it. Sometimes it will tell you to continue or just stop, so it's not that bad. Um, but there is a hive mind ability here. So the cave sickles combat dice and defense change depending on how many are in within their sphere of influence, which is four spaces all the way around. Okay, doesn't need line of sight for this. So it upgrades their dice and their defense. Um, they also have sickle anatomy. Their immune to poison and movement point costs are not increased by terrain or allies. Okay. Because yeah, if you walk through an ally, it costs an additional two or costs an additional movement point. So let's start first with the red one, which is down here. Okay. Uh, okay. So is your no a... wait, hold on. Red. Oh yeah, red, purple, orange. Got it. Okay. So We're red good. goes first. Yeah. Okay. So is there an opponent, Jason? There's not. Okay. Is there an opponent within range four? One, two, three, four. No. There's not. Can it move? and attack an opponent within range four. Well, his movement is six. One. Okay. So if now, he moves one space, one, two, three, he he's still not in range. Right. Uh, monsters can jump over pits like us, but if it's more than two spaces, they'll never attempt it. So right now, they can't get to us. So then, can it move and make an attack within range four? No. Uh, so no, even if he moved here. One, two, three, four, five. Can't. So none of that happens. So he doesn't do anything. Okay. Okay. Then the purple would go. It's going to be same the same thing. thing. Okay. Then orange is going to go. No one's adjacent. Is their opponent within range four? One, two, three, four. I'm no. not. Okay. Can it move and attack an opponent within range four? Yeah. Yes. Move to be up to range four from the nearest opponent. One, two, three, four. So he goes right there. Okay. He can see me, and now he's going to attack. So... Uh, his dice get upgraded, 
So on a creature's card, you're going to see the two combat dice that he's going to get. So he's going to get two, two white. white dice. But because he's adjacent to another one, we upgrade the white die to an orange. So all the different colors have different numbers and symbols on them. So of course, different colors, they get increased. Um, on the back of, I don't worry about it, on the back of that there's all the different color of dice, all the different numbers, um, which ones are better than the other. I'm not really too sure just yet, we'll kind of see what happens, I just know <laughs> orange is better than white. Mm, great. All right, so we're gonna roll these two dice, and the first thing that you need to do is you have to see if you can actually hit the target. Once you hit the target, based on their defense, then you see how much damage you do, and then you re can reduce the damage with armor, or I can dodge, or do something like that. So, um, I think I have to, let me just double check there, if I have to decide to dodge right now. During the dodge step of an attack, great. Uh, action phase, that's cool. I should see when the a dodge step is determined. I think, I, I think it would be right now. So I'm, oh, I can exhaust the dodge this. Okay, I'm going to do it right now, actually. So, instead of spending one SP to dodge... Uh-huh, you're going to use your armor. I'm going to use my armor right here. So I just have to exhaust it. I tap it sideways, which means I can't use it again this round. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I get to roll a dodge. So, his attack dice, we're going to add up the numbers, which is nine. Now, my defense, or basically... Yeah, it's not my defense, not my armor. My base defense is a nine, mm -hmm. okay? And then I have this defensive core that I start the game with, which gives me two health, two additional health, and one armor. So my defense is 10. Right. So technically right now, he's not hitting me. Because he had to match or exceed. Your defense. My defense. Yes. Plus, because <laughs> I dodge, I get to roll an additional black die, okay? And then for every shield that I get, I add one to my defense. Wow. Okay. You are really protected. I am I'm hunkered down there. So right, my defense is really a fourteen. His nine to fourteen is a complete no miss. Doesn't even hit me. Got it. If he hit me then we would move to damage. Okay. Because it did no damage to me, mm -hmm. I get to untap my occult shirt. That's just nice. its power, so I can dodge again. Nice. Alright. Now if he was adjacent to me, I could now counter him. Uh, get it a free attack. Get a free attack. It would still cost me, in order to counter, it would cost me 2 SP to counter. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but he's out of range of my melee attack, so I'm not going to do it. So, his turn is done. Now, technically, uh, a monster had one true condition. So, for this round, we don't have to worry about the hourglass. Something actually happened. Right. Okay? So, that cave sickle is done. Now we move to the next cave sickle, which is you. Yes. You're controlling. The one. Okay. There's no opponent adjacent. There's no opponent. I can't one, see. Two. Oh, yeah, I can't see. Mm -hmm. So I would have to move. Right. In order to do it. So I'm moving through this one. Yep, which you're not going to get affected by anything. So one, two. Mm -hmm. and I and would have stay to stay as, there. Yep. Yep. Can it move an attack opponent within range where move to be up? to range for from the nearest opponent, then make an attack. So I honestly think he wants to be as far away as possible. Okay. So he's actually going to be back here, where he can still see me, but he, at furthest range. Oh, but it's not okay. within range four. No. Okay, that makes sense. Yes. You were counting. I was counting. Yeah, that's too far away. Uh, so same thing. You're going to attack me. Okay, with a white and an orange. White and orange. Because we're dodge. still near. Okay. So you're looking... To hit me, you need a 10. Or an 11. Or an 11. That, that still works. Sorry Good job. Sorry about that. Okay, so now once the hit happens, now you can go to determine the amount of damage. All right. So, to start... Oh, I didn't, I didn't roll my dodge. Right. Did, oh, boy. It doesn't add anything. The Skull is... Blank doesn't add anything. Yeah. Okay. So, an 11 to a 10. So, the first thing that you do is you determine the, the difference in that number. So, right now it's one point of damage. Now, again, if you play Descent with Surges or any, any of those types of games, uh, the different symbols on here is going to be ways to increase your damage for either uh, a hero or enemies. A monster. So these enemies actually have, down here, 
This shield. little symbol, shield. So for every shield, it's an additional point Sorry. of damage. So you roll two shields. So that's three damage. I would check my armor. My armor actually is nothing. Oh, I have a defensive core. I could always surge. Yeah, I don't have any actual armor. I think the only one who has armor is Rook. Right. He does minus one to the minus one or two, I think, to the damage. So one. I take three damage from that attack. Goes on here. Uh, little tibbet. Nightingale was the only one who died during our crawl, so I don't want that to happen again. Uh, and that's it. So they're done. Okay. Zeke, Zeke is going in. Okay. All right. Zeke <laughs> needs to move. Uh, so I'm going to spend one point to move in. One, two, three. And now I'm going to get some attacks because it is uh, the one we want to kill anyway to yes. get points for. Now I know I'm going over a lot of the rules now, but of course this is the first time we're going through everything, right. which is going to be a, a, why it's taking so long. But something I want to point out is there are attack of opportunities in this game. So let's say I happen to move again, this creature here would get a free attack on me because okay. I moved it from an adjacent space out of them. But I'm not doing that. I'm going to go right here with my one move and now attack this cave sickle. So I've got two short swords. So uh, for each weapon, these short swords, they will give me a purple die, which is a little bit better than a yellow. I mean, a, a white, but not an orange. You okay? You're I thought white cousin. was better than purple, but okay. No, I think it's white, purple, orange. Got it. I don't know. So getting two dice because I have two one-handed weapons. They each give me this. Now they have something called... Oh, yeah, I think purple is worse, and you'll see why. Yeah. Man, you're so good at this game. Yeah. So you'll see some more keywords or tags on here. Uh, real quick, they both have the ability to exhaust, and I can move one space, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, or they have combo light. So if they are paired with another card with the keyword light, I get to use the ability at the bottom, which I do because these They're are the both light thing. weapons. So let's see if I can read this. Uh, I can then exhaust this to reroll one of my combat dice. If I exhaust, I can reroll. So either use it for okay. movement or rerolling. And also, it's called finesse white. Finesse allows you to upgrade the, the die uh -huh. to that color. So let's get rid of the purples. Uh, yeah, that's what I was like. And get I the two we whites. All used white. Okay. Yep. So I get two white. So okay. as long as I have two short, uh, two light swords, I get this. Now, it's going to cost me two. I was going to say Action points, SP Actions. points to attack, yes. which I'm going to spend. Okay, now um, I could, well, I don't have any more SP, but I could, if I had any, I could empower and roll the black die to do additional damage, or basically gives me the symbols. Right. Because these swords, for two shields, I get two damage, and for a star, which it doesn't appear on here. Yeah, it's on the shot. regular dice. All right, so I'm going to attack this guy. The Cave Sickle's defense is an 8, and their defense does not upgrade because of that guy there. All right, awesome. Love it. So that is an 11. I've got two shields. So 11, one. 12, 13, and... Wait, I thought it was two. Oh, two. Big. Okay, got mm -hmm. it. And then the extra star right here is one, so 14. Nice. So because I hit, what I'm going to do is because I hit, I, I knew I hit 11 to a 11 eight. to 8, I'm just going to add up all my bonuses at that point and then just take the difference. Okay. So it'll be easier to do that way. All right, so it's 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 to an 8. 6. How much health do they have? They have 6. That's right. So he's defeated. Nice. Yep, one shot. And oh, this is going to be actually really cool. So that defeats your group of cave sickles. Correct. So this goes away. And because we killed the group, you get a loot. We got our first loot card. So we set this deck up based on the mundane level. That's the loot level of our mission. There's mundane, common, uncommon, and rare. Okay. There's four different loot levels and a bunch of different cards for each. Um, for instance, here's basically a, a whole stack of different, the, of just mundane, mundane. items. Okay. Uh, so there's, in this deck, there's uh, basically gold that we're going to get, and then three 
other cards that we might run into. There's 30 mm -hmm. cards in this deck. That's going to be the one I pick. Okay. Six gold. Six. So we share gold as a party. Yes. And this comes out, and it doesn't go back into the deck, so. Okay. Am I done? You're done. I'm not done. You're not? I'm going to tap a short sword Oh. to move diagonally, and then tap my blade works, which allows me to get an extra free attack without wow. spending this pay. Look at that. But then you're going to be there when the monster... 11, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there when I defeat this monster. 11, 12, 13. I think I missed it by one. Yeah. So I could tap this short sword to re-roll a die, but mm. I'm not going to. Yeah, what if it goes left? I'm just going to do five damage to it. Okay. No, so, 11 minus 8 is 3. Plus 2. Oh, 13. Got it. Yes, we're good. Because right, mm -hmm. of my shields. So five damage to the orange guy. We can track it right here. Pretty sweet, right? Yeah. All right, Zeke. So that's our first round. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it real, real quick so we can just get a bearing of kind of what we've been through and kind of strategize our next turn. Mm -hmm. Okay? Good. All right, so that actually break was a little bit longer than we thought, right? We actually stopped and we, we waited another day or two, uh, which is why Remy has some paint on her, mm -hmm. which is nice. Uh, but we are at the top of the order right now, uh, starting with Remy. So we had some time to think about this one. And uh, I think there's a pretty good move for you right now. Yeah, she's going to fly, what I like doing with her the best, um, over to get to um, the other side of this great big pit. Um, so if you remember, she has seven movement spaces. Um, but she can't fly over the red, right? Right, so she can actually go over uh, Rook at his space and it doesn't cost additional movement for you. Right, because I'm flying over top of mm -hmm. him. So one, two, three, four, yeah. and then this is five, yeah. six, seven. seven. Yep, exactly. And okay. that costs two um, oh. SP instead of just one. Correct. Flight. But we got our extra three. Everyone gets three at the beginning of the round. And you have started with five, which is good. So now she's going to use an additional two to do actually her attack. So um, with her war axe, she gets to attack with two white dice to start off with. Mm -hmm. And let's see, passive gains. So remember, she gets another attack. And then um, I can exhaust my special power uh, to re-roll a dice when I'm using a two-handed weapon, which she, oh, perfect. Okay. she is. Yeah, you just do a plus one base extra damage or damage? Physical hit. damage. Oh, physical, oh, physical damage. All right, so first you still have to hit. Hit, so we're, yes. They're, you're targeting for an eight right now. Right. Okay. Oh, I think that worked really well. Eleven. Out. All right, eleven. So basically you did twelve right now because you're plus one. Correct. And then she gets extra bonuses for having the shields. So for every shield, she gets one, plus one physical damage. Nice. So you said 12, so 13, 14, 15. 15. He has defense 8, 7 damage. He's dead. Uh, wow. Great job. <laughs> He's dead. So unfortunately, you won't be able to get to. But Why let's not? see. Let's see. Let's see. I think, I, think I can get there. Okay. Let's see what happens. Um, so Rook's going to go next. So let's move that out of the way. He's going to move up and do what he does best. He's going to... Move. Hopefully he does what he does best. Oh, this seen is it. the He's first the time. Guy. Yeah. So it costs two movement points to move out of that space. Mm -hmm. So we're two, three, four. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay. So that costs one point of move, one SP. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to try and, and now, push this giant boulder. Right. So the, is the boulder two? Oh, uh, it's just one to interrupt it's the just space. One. Okay. So what I have to do is my base strength is six. Mm-hmm. And then I have to um, add that to two purple dice. Which is a skill check. And the target value is what we're looking for. We need a 10 to move this thing. Not a six, problem. Six, 12. 12. You can move it. So you can move it one space. I'm going to move it this way. And if you push into a pit, it just falls into completely the down. Pit and off the board. Um, so he has two... Um, he has two or three left. He has three left. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm wondering if I, um, now take advantage of this extra, I can use my special power for mend. Um, it costs one SP to gain two heal tokens. Doesn't cost anything, right? Or does it say somewhere? 
Is it that? No, nope. that me that little one right here that we're pointing to. That just means this. You can use this once per encounter. Oh, okay. so it doesn't cost anything. Nope. To see use the it? left hand side here. That's how much it would cost. Whereas see my gore shot actually costs one SP to use. So you're it's free to use that. You just can only use it once per encounter. So by you getting that, you're going to get two of these healing tokens. Mm -hmm. And then I once you have that. these two healing tokens, you spend one SP to spend it. Oh, to spend it. To okay. basically give somebody a healing. I think it heals six HP. And if you heal somebody else, you gain an SP back. It just says to do a heal. So we would have to look up here. Oh, right. I think, oh, check it out. It's on the other side of the thing. Got it. So spend one SP and a figure within your SOI, Sphere of Influence, heal six. And I think yours is you get that SOI back if you heal somebody else. Yes. So you've got two of those heal tokens, which is good because my, my one chick, uh, Nightingale, has damage has three on damage on her. <laughs> now you couldn't move again because you already moved. You I already moved. Move I obviously don't have any range attacks, so I have to stay where I am. All right. So uh, I've got Nightingale next. Now... I could go back here and attack this, but I think I'm going to leave that to Zeke. Or, but then the cave sickle would be able to attack back. So let's see if I can make it all the way down. Um, so it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because it costs additional to move through a person, eight, nine, ten. I would need ten movement points to get down there. So my movement is seven. Uh, and then for each SP that I mm -hmm. spend in addition to that, I get two more. So I would have to spend two, I would have to spend three to get down there mm -hmm. and then two to attack. Mm -hmm. So I would then be out of SP. I don't know if I can one shot. I don't know if I'm as good as, as you were. Right. Um, so you're going to stay back? Do I stay back and or attack just this guy? Well, how would you attack him? Oh, you know what? I, my, my items grant me a lot of dodges. So I am going to go down there. Because I'm hurt, you could always just heal me. Okay. So I'm going to do it. So I'm going to spend one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right here. And let's see. If I move one more space, I'm going to trigger this totem, which I don't want to do just yet. I actually but want... But you can't attack diagonal. I can. Oh, you can? Yep. It's considered adjacent. So I'm going to spend all my SP, and I'm going to attack again with my long sword. So uh, with the long sword, I don't think I've attacked with her yet. Uh, these are my two weapons. So it is a white die and a purple die because I have this magic talisman. Uh, but this combo right here with light, uh, if I have a light weapon, which I do, I get to change my white die into actually an orange. So I'm going to roll an orange and a purple when I do this attack. Untap my cold shirt. Let's see, so looking for an eight. Nine. So nine, I don't know if that's gonna help out that much. So nine, and then my plus is two books, which I have two books equal one damage. So I did 10, two so defense. Two damage. I only do two damage to it. But I guess, it, I guess it's worth it, it starts it off. All right, so the purple's here. And that's it for me. Okay. Okay. So now the cave sickles are up. We go in the number order. So red goes first. There is no red. Purple. So purple is going to attack me back because I believe there's an opponent adjacent. There yes. is. Make a um, melee attack against the opponent with the most damage. Okay. Now there's a follow up to this, meaning the follow up is going to trigger if this attack actually hits. And I, um, I think it just needs to, I think it has to do damage in order to trigger the follow-up. Okay, so we right. do not want it to hit right. what you're saying. Yep, so a cave sickle has two white dice. There's no one within its range, so it doesn't get upgraded. Upgrade, right. Okay, uh, my defense is a nine, 10, because this defensive core, and I'm okay. going to tap my occultist shirt to gain a dodge. Okay. So that's an 11. So now I'm dodging. Okay. So I'm going to add every shield. Four shields adds the so defense. So it's blocked. Doesn't hit me at all. Okay. Okay? And then, because it didn't hit me at all, unexhaust this card and counter. 
So I automatically get to perform a counterattack against this cave sickle. Okay. I don't have to spend the two SP. So orange and purple again, right? Yes, orange and purple. Right here. Excellent. Um, Ooh, uh, that right. usually in our household means re-roll. It does, if it's not flat. So we're going to re-roll that. Okay. All right. There we go. Everyone okay. probably has their own household rules for it. Unless it's a card. card it gets re-rolled. Do right. Just, and that is not it. a card. Okay. Uh, so what is that? Seven. So that's 13. 12. That is 12. That's why you're here. Right. So 12 damage. Uh, two books. So 13 damage. Two shields. Oh, two shields is plus two. So that's plus three. So you said 12. 15 minus eight. Gone. Go bye bye. Excellent. On his attack. On his attack, I got to counter it. Okay. All right. Then we have left is uh. Oh, thank you. Orange. Orange is now also going to attack me. Same thing with Zeke. Zeke is um. I'm making a dodge, so I can dodge this. I. The only thing I do have to double check. I'm not gonna do it right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, when do I get to decide if I want to dodge or not? I don't know if it's before the roll or after. Oh, so yeah, we forgot to I'm, check that. I'm going to tap it now anyway. To be safe. Just to be safe. Uh, he gets two whites. So, again, an 11. Zeke's defense, I think we all have I think we all have 10. Because we start with 9. And Defense is the swords, right? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, my, my, my ability core right here. Yeah, I have 10. Plus one. So, 10. So, and I 10. just need, I need one shield on my dodge here. Got it. Thank goodness. Shields. And I can re-roll this, because that's oh. that Zeke's special power. I can always re-roll it. Got it. Uh, so block, no hit. No. It needs to equal to, be equal to or greater the defense. My defense is 11. It got me. So I actually need a 12. Got it. So okay. I'm going to re-roll this. Okay. I need two shields. There you go. Okay. Completely did it. Um, so now what I could do is I could automatically counter it. Not automatically, but I have the ability to counter it. But it would cost me two SP. Oh. Because it didn't hit me. It didn't do any damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, whereas opposed to Nightingale's armor allowed me to counter right For away. For free. Yep. Right. Uh, so I'm not going to, though, because now it's Zeke's turn. I'm going to untap my cards. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to tap Bladeworks for free, which right. allows me to get an attack in. Because okay. this thing only has one health left. Makes sense. Right? So my swords got upgraded to two whites. You get to re-roll either one of those? I do. I can tap my swords to re-roll. So I'm actually going to tap both of them Wow. to re-roll both dice. Okay. That's actually worse than what I did. So uh, I'll actually spend two SP to attack. And try again, but now I don't have any rerolls. Correct. All I have to do is one damage. Right. This is rough. There you go. Nine, Nine. ten, eleven. Because there's two shields. Got Defeated it. Defeated them. Okay. Okay. Now I want to. I want to point this out because I forgot this in the beginning. Uh, we have to keep track of our time, right? So we have two time markers right now. Oh, there's numbers on here. Two time markers right now because this is our second round that we're in. Okay. All right. Uh, and I defeated the cave sickle. Cave sickle goes away, which means we get a loot. Get a loot because it's the last one out of this set that got defeated. Right. Nine yes. gold. Oh, nine. Okay. okay. Good. All right. So we're at fifteen, which is good. Uh, and I'm not going to move. Because what if more cave sickles spawn back there? In the back, right. Yeah, because right. I want to keep killing them. Because again, only one person has to make it to the exit. Okay. So I'll stay back there to cover ourselves. Because that totem's going to go now. It's not going to go now because I don't see it just yet. It's still center to center. Yeah, but it's going to be my turn and I'm going to move. Right, 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 right. Yeah, let's double check there. I can't see it because it goes center to center. Yeah, it goes through the thing. Yeah, no, you can't see it. So end of the round. Okay, mm -hmm. monsters did have a true condition, so we don't have to put that time marker down. But now we are in a new round, so... so we get three back. We right? get three back, yep. So I have four here. This, three. And I'm at three. max with five. 
Okay. Perfect. Uh, the only thing I would, I don't want to forget, so please remind me, before we exit the dungeon, mm -hmm. we definitely want to use your heal on her. Okay. Because damage carries over into the next mission. Right. Unless it's notified, like, um, you get, like, a full restore. So I don't know if it will or not. So we right, after sure that's right. That. Yeah. Okay. So back to the top, which is Remy. So, right. yeah, as soon as you make it to this square, you're going to read that red totem. Well, I think Remy should make her way over to the um, treasure chest. Oh. Because she can fly. Oh, right. I'm just going to... I think maybe I just move this turn and not actually fly. When in case there's a, a monster that comes yeah. out? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so I can't even fly mm, past it. So why don't I just move six spaces? You... Uh... Yeah, seven spaces is going to put me in the pit. You could push it all the way and get that blue token right away. Or we could just do it next turn. Because if there is a monster, you'll be able to get an attack. And look, last time you, you one-shotted something. Right. So let me move. Okay. Straight up move for one. Yeah. So I'll go one, two. I think the next spot you move. So let's go three. Boom. That's it. Okay. All right. I've been waiting since we last played. I know. Where's of what the this decoder? Is gonna be. Where's the decoder ring? Where's the decoder ring? Wasn't it on the table? Uh. Unless one of the cats <coughs> batted it off. Uh. I'll be right back. Okay, it was off to the side. So the red totem. As you peer around the corner, you see a handful of cave sickles skittering move. about. They spring t into action when they notice you. The cave sickles are blocking the path that leads deeper into the caves. Spawn two cave sickles adjacent to the space this totem occupied. Okay. I'm going to put them right next to you. Okay. Then across the gap, you see another mm. cave sickle emerge near a small box. Spawn one more cave sickle adjacent to the blue loot token. Excellent. And that is all. I like it. So you stop right there. You round that corner. Two cave sickles pop out. And, and I'm going to attack. attack the first one. Right. Because if you move any more, they're going to gonna attack me. So attack. for two, I'm going to use my war axe to attack. Two, Two whites. whites are right here. See if here. you're better than me with that. And so you do get to reroll? It's with that. here. When making a melee attack, if dice. you have a two-handed weapon, you may cool. reroll any dice in your combat dice. Pool. I like it. Boom. No need to reroll. Twelve. So twelve. She also gets bonuses from a star. So the star is one. So we're at thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right. When determining this weapon gains one physical damage if exhausted. Wow! So you get a always plus one. You can tap it for an additional one? Yeah, so wait. We're at 12, 13. Oh, the book gives him plus one for every. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I think he's dead. Right. So there are two cave sickles within its ROI, which yeah. is four spaces, but that doesn't increase his armor just yet. He needs three. Okay. So he's got eight, and eight. you had a 17. lot more. Okay, so you do nine damage to it? Correct. Okay. I told you, she's the, I, she's the best I, character. That's actually really sweet. She can fly, and she has the most awesome weapon. Wow, that's actually really good. Okay, oh, she's I done. I gotta figure out where they when they come in. Uh, oh, I guess, yeah, that was... There you go, been. roll that, because that's after Remy. So it's here, and then for every shield, it goes down one. So one, two, three. Okay. Cool. Good, so... It doesn't mess anything. Okay, and this is the third round, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay, Rook, you want to get up there and do something? Or really? I can't. Maybe not do anything? Um, what, I can heal you. Yeah, I only have three damage on me. All right, one, two, three, four. Are you going to be able to make it around? Yeah. Okay, so then I'll just move up yeah, here. Yeah, five. five. That's fine. 
Because maybe next round, if we can kill both of these here. Oh, look, I'm all the way back there. That was kind of silly. I'm waiting for you. Well, we thought it could have spawned back there. That's true. Yeah, we didn't know. And that's what's actually pretty cool about this. Right. It could have been anywhere. Uh, so Rook's up, Nightingale. All right, so I'm coming in. Let's see if I can do some damage. Oh, yeah, you have seven movement on So you. I'll spend one. Yeah. One, two, three, four. I'm not going to try and jump the gap because mm -hmm. you could just fly there and get Without it. Without any yeah, yeah. problems. Uh, you'll get three... Yeah, okay, I, I see I see what's gonna happen. And then I could even cast a spell against that one to weaken it next turn. So I'm gonna spend two to attack. So what was it? It was a, it was a purple and an orange for my attack. Casting buh, 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 buh. Ten. Ten. What are your books? The two books give me one, so that's eleven. One shield does nothing. So eleven damage to eight. So three. All right, you weakened him by half. You know, I'm just not as good as you, but I heard him. Yeah. Zeke, I'm just gonna run down there. Yeah. So untap everything that I have. Um, one movement is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So three more. I'll just spend all. I'll spend everything I have okay. to just run down here. Okay. Trying to catch up to you. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. Check this out. My short swords allow me to move one space diagonally. So I think I can tap both of them and move here. Two diagonal spaces. Yeah, but you don't have any power to do that. I don't need it. This is just automatic. I just tap these to get movement. Oh. And then I can use my blade works to get an attack, to get an attack in. in. Now the only thing is, I believe the cave sickle is going to be able to attack me. Because you got, yeah. Because I was here. So this is something that of course we'll check out afterwards to see, you know, if he could have gotten that opportunity to attack. I believe he does. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say that he does. Uh, and so he gets a two attack. Why don't you attack for an attack against me? That's not really good. Remember, I was rolling really... I was really doing damage to him in the practice And I'm gonna, And I'm going to dodge. Yeah, you should probably do that. Do you have to pay one to dodge? Do dodge. Reroll your dodge roll. Oh. I can't just dodge. Okay. So do you want to rethink that then? No. Let's not rethink it, because I don't think, I think I would have gotten hit down there. Eight, you're so lucky. You're so lucky. All right, now I'm going to attack. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's attack. So free attack. I can't reroll these dice. Nothing. You were exhausted from just running up there. I was. I did a little dance, mm -hmm. dodged. Didn't dodge. And now the cave sickles go. Okay. Cave sickles starting with the red one, dead. Purple is, is right it next to us. Opponent adjacent, yes. Opponent with the most damage so on it's gonna it. Be Nightingale. Nightingale. How do you do it? So again, my defense is 10. 10. Um, again, I don't know about the whole dodge thing. Maybe I should have done that ahead of time. So let's see how much damage you actually do. So 10 and plus one shield is an additional damage. So it's three damage. Okay. So I'm at six, six, which you're probably just gonna kill you. Kill me, right. Okay, now orange goes. Orange is no opponent adjacent. Is there an opponent within range four? One, two, three, one, two, three. There's both of us. Then move to be adjacent to the opponent with the most damage within movement range. Make a range four attack. Oh, okay. Makes a range four attack against me. So it's the same thing. Nightingale? Yep, against Nightingale. You don't have to move up? No. Oh, you know what? And its attack gets upgraded. The other guy's attack should have been upgraded as well. Because of it's within the hive mind. Yeah, he actually shoots a range attack against me. So because they're not in four spaces of each other. Oh, one, two, three, four. So they're not near each other. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought so the sorry. hive mind was four spaces outside. Yeah, the hesicles, if it's SOI, is within four, which it is, because that counts diagonally. So that's really every space. All around here is one space. Then this ring is two spaces. Then this ring is three. This ring is four. Oh. But is your opponent within range four? One, two, three, four. There's actually not. No. Okay. okay. Can it move and attack an opponent yes. within range four? That it can. One, two. Now one, two, three, four. So that's... Why can't I count to the four? It moves here, uh -huh. and now it shoots me. Okay. Within range four of its other buddy. Okay. And I'm going to dodge before I see Okay, it. sorry. Ten. Ten. Uh, ten. Okay, good. I get my free dodge. Blocked. Block that one. Then we move on. Uh, that's it. I could counter, but I'm out of range. Right. So I actually can't counter. Okay. Okay. So now it's turn four. Going into turn four, right? Okay. So we're going to see if we can actually finish this mission in this round. Okay. Okay. To try and do the best mm -hmm. timing. Oh, I think actually the best time. Can you take a look it at that? It was eight. Oh, Eight so, rounds or less. Oh, so we could actually take another turn if we need to. So why don't we just finish up with Remy, Remy? over there? Remy, so can she fly oh, over to, to fly. the... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So she's one away. She would get attacked if she moved. Uh. So if we have the time, why don't we just kill these two guys? Okay, so damage. I can attack from diagonal. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to use two. Mm -hmm. Can I have the other white? Now, because you're attacking through one of these two spaces, and hindered one or an opponent or an ally, uh -huh. he gets plus one defense. Okay. So you need a, a nine technically to hit. Okay. Ten. Ten. It hits. So that's Eleven. One damage. Two damage. Uh, Twelve. Thirteen. 13, that's enough. Yeah. He's got three damage on him already. Okay. Excellent. So then I'm going to move out of the way so that Rook can come up. Yeah, well, how about, why don't you fly now? Why don't you fly over there? Okay. Right? I'd rather I you fly than one of us jumps and we could we could fail the jump. Okay, so that's my turn. So Yeah, but am I going to get attacked? No, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can come all the way over okay. here. Okay. Can you put me over there? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so she's out of points. Mm -hmm. uh, Rook will move. How about I move one, two, two three, four mm -hmm. here. And then, so that was one point. Oh, and then I spend me? one to heal you and I gain it back. Excellent. So I'm back up to full health. Thank you. Uh, that's Rook. Mm -hmm. Nightingale. So you're not going to trigger the exit? No, I'm not. I'm not going to trigger it. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to gore shot this. Oh, okay. I can just cast spells. Okay, great. So I, ha I didn't actually give myself any things this round like you did. Well, here's three. Thank you. So yeah, I'm going to use my first spell, which is Gore Shot. Okay? So it's a Curer. That's a type of skill class that's in it. Okay. It's level one. So I'm going to cast spell six. So it's going to cost me one SP to do this. Okay. Uh, on a, so the spell level, well, I guess power is six. Then I have to add my um, casting die to it. So everyone's casting die starts as a purple. Got it. But because I have the magic talisman, I get to upgrade my casting die to a white. Okay, so we move that, put that back. So this plus a six. Oh. So my casting power is a it's 12. 12. Now, when you take a look at the cave sickle, the conviction is two purple dice. So I'm going to have you roll. So basically, this is the defense of him For trying to like, block a spell. Oh. So it's different than. Regular defense. Right. Ten. So I win. All I have to do is just pass. Okay, so the books and stuff don't count anything for no. your conviction? No. So okay. then I just finish reading what the spell did. Okay. If successful, deal two magic damage. 
you may take one ear, um, irreducible damage to deal additional magic damage equal to your highest level cur spell. So I could take one damage to do one more. I'm not going to. I no, just, because it's not going to kill him. Right. I just did two damage to it. Okay. Okay, so that was orange. Okay. But what I am going to do is I'm going to do it again. Because I can just keep casting this multiple times. It's not a tap. It's not a one-time use. I'm just going to cast another spell. Oh. So let's do it again. So you're going to keep doing this. And I did this. So six. So 11, 11. this time. If I can just burn them down this way. Nine. Nine. Two more damage. That's not it. And then I'll cast it one final time. This should be enough. Twelve. Boom, that's it. Four. I just shot like a bunch of fireballs at wow, it. Wow, I'm so grateful. Right? I don't want you to get hurt. Yeah, I know, because we're at the end of the round. And then how about this? Because I think this is going to be the end of the encounter. At least I think so. I think that's how this works when you go to the exit on the end of the counter. I'm going to trigger my once per counter ability Which with is Nightingale. What? I give everybody one SP okay. and I get two SP. One. One. Okay. That's it. Oh, okay. Just in case something happens. Okay, well Zeke has to go. He's going to move closer. Zeke's going to go to... This is going... Oh. Loot. You're right. Do you want to pull it? No, you're the one that killed them. And you've been, those are two good loops that we got, so you should pull it. Yeah, five. Yeah, we're doing okay. 20? 20 gold? I'll we haven't 20. used any of our one time items, I know. so that is pretty helpful. All right, so Zeke's going. I untap everything, and I'm just going to spend one to move to the exit. Uh, Near the exit. You just want to stay there. What do you think? Do you think, for a certain reason, that when you open that chest, they could spawn all the way back down there. For that reason, and that reason alone, gonna I'm back. gonna move back. So first I'm gonna do my two swords, diagonal, diagonal, then spend my one, and move one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, right? Oh he thinks God. he hears something. He wants to ace this test. Okay, I mean, I don't blame him. I, I would want to as well. And then if I'm going to get another three next round, I'm going to push myself to move another two spaces. So one, two. That's it. Okay. End of the round. End of the round. Now, so now the we... monster did not attack this round. Okay. So, so we, we take a penalty. So we have to put one of these tokens in play. Time tokens. Four of these, we lose. Okay. I don't think it's going to matter. Now an actual time goes, right? So we're in round five. Right. And Remy goes first. She's going to spend one to move. Where are you moving? What do you mean? On the treasure chest. You're right next to it. All you have to do is spend Oh, one. I don't have to be on it? Nope. Spend oh, one then I spend to... one to encounter it. The blue loot space. You find a pile of treasure. Gain two random consumables. In addition, finding this box will look good when you get graded. When getting graded. Gain two bonus points. Excellent. To our final grade. So No uh, cave sickle spot. Alright, look. Two two consumables? Two random consumables. Alright. Look at this. These are all the consumables for oh mundane level. Gosh. So uh, I haven't even, I don't even know what's in here. We haven't looked through anything, so I'm gonna do Other it. than the ones that we automatically start with. Right, right? I'm gonna do a nice good shuffle. Yeah, I wanted to kind of keep everything spoiler free as possible as we play through this. Yeah. But I know And once... then she can really just fly to the exit. Oh, okay. Yeah, why not, I mean, right? she has the points. Nobody else needs to do anything. Nobody else is hurt. Oh, yeah, everyone's at full health, right? Okay. All right, I'm going to fan this out. Do you want to look and see? Or... What do you mean, look and see? Well, like, because I, the top oh. ones. I'm going to take this take one. one. What? I think it's Which an is an ice arrow. arrow. This mundane consumable. Discard. I get two of them. Oh, sorry. Before rolling for an attack, you discard it. 
When the target is making a conviction check during the follow-up step of this attack, you may reroll any of their dice. You may not use more than one arrow on an attack. Okay, well that was boring because none of us have a... I don't even know if we need a bow. I guess we do. Oh! And another... H. Hi potion. Yeah, hyper potion like uh, Rook has to discard... You can discard it and heal an ally um, three and gain at one action point back. Okay, okay, cool. So these go into your bag. Into your backpack. Your backpack can carry three items. Can right we now trade to, items? We can. Okay. We can. Between missions we can do that. I think okay. again, if it allows us to. But yeah, if we're next to each other, um, you can't... I don't think you can give items, but you can take items. Okay. To somebody. Okay? Okay, then I'll spend two to move to the exit. Well, you did really good. And then, and then the what exit. happens? Then you activate the exit. What does that mean? Uh, it means this. Win condition. Oh. And, oh, it just ends their turn. An adventure on their turn, the blue exit. So we read the reward. I hope so. Restore adventurers. Perfect. So restore means we get all our health back. Oh, okay. We can fully trade items. Okay. All that. And then it says continue to wrong way, page eight. So does that mean this is not over? I don't know. I've I I haven't played this before. Oh. I think that means, yeah, that this mission's over. But let's. Now, would you assume that this gets read by the app? I'm assuming it's going to get read by the app, which I will be placing right here. Rook knocked on the thick stone slab with the butt of his weapon. The sound echoed like a massive stone drum. No way we're getting through that. Nightingale glared at the obstruction, kicking weakly at it. Damn it! Did we take a wrong turn? She glanced over her shoulder at where Zeke and Remy watched. Seems that way. Rook lowered his weapon. Remember, this whole thing is coordinated. Hundreds of candidates are going through the same test. The monsters aren't wild. They have to release them for us in each area, or we'll have nothing to fight. The twists and turns are just another part of the mast. It looks like they can seal up passages with these big stone panels. Zeke dug around in one of his pockets, coming up with a cigarette. Translation, we're too awesome for this test. They want us to slow down so they can spend time on the teams that suck. Looks like it. Rook grinned as he gestured back down the way they came. I think I saw a good place to camp back there. At least we aren't sucking, Remy offered, shrugging one of her wings. I'd rather be in the group they have to slow down than the one that fails. This looks like a good spot. Remy tried to sound enthusiastic. The cavern they had chosen to spend the night in had a ceiling at least 20 feet up. Damp stalactites glittered in the light of their glowstones, occasionally dripping water. Even so, most of the floor was dry and flat enough to serve their needs. I like it, Rook gestured ahead with one meaty hand. Only one other way out. Should be easy to keep watch. We don't have to stop. Nightingale hurried past Remy into the cavern. Wouldn't it be sweet if we were the first team ever to finish the mast in just one day? Yeah. Zeke stopped right in the middle of the cave, sloughing off his heavy pack. It dropped with a dull thud at his feet. But we won't. If we try to keep going without resting, he shook his head. Better to finish a little slow and keep all our limbs. Remy needed no further encouragement to drop her pack, tossing it to the ground. She closed her eyes, letting her massive wings stretch and flex. It felt fantastic, at least until she felt them smack something. Ow! Zeke yelped. Sorry, Remy blushed, retreating a little. I didn't mean to. Nah, it's nothing, Zeke shrugged, wiping a feather off his cheek. It's better than being slapped by Knight's tail. I haven't done that in ages, Nightingale frowned at him. He returned her scowl with a wide grin and she turned away, looking around. Guess I'll start the fire. I can help. Rook set his bag down at his feet, fishing around for a few seconds before pulling out a set of flint and steel. I'd like to do it, Nightingale said with excitement as she took the tools from Rook. The mast is supposed to prepare us for whatever Midar can throw at us. That means no shortcuts. Rook then pulled out another set of tools, some sticks and tinder. No shortcuts? He asked Riley, holding the objects out towards her. Nightingale sighed. Flint and steel counts as a shortcut, huh? Rook only smiled back. 
Okay, fine, she said, swapping what she had with Rook. Then she got to work getting the fire started. Remy frowned, thinking desperately of what she could do. The other members of the team all seemed to know each other already, but they barely knew her name. She was determined to pull her own weight through the rest of the mast. I could set up the sleeping bags. Remy looked down at their little pile of supplies. Sure, Zeke was the last to separate, weapon in hand. I'll scout the rest of the cave just in case. Okay, so we just heard a little story that happened at the end of our little mission there. And Remy is setting up camp. And in the meantime, Zeke is going to go around and just kind of search out the area. So there's a little section right here in the campaign book that tells us to perform a skill check for Zeke. So I have to pass a perception 10 check. Uh, so I take a look at my character, my perception 6. So I roll two purple dice and I'm trying to get a 10 on this. 11. All right, perfect. So that's an 11 plus, that's what, 17. Well, I'm glad so. you did it. I just noticing you have the highest perception out of all of us. You've got, got a good perception. perception. Mm-hmm. So uh, we succeed there, so we're going to go ahead and continue on to check the loot story event. Okay. So then, then the, that event will come into play. Oh. And then we'll go to the second part. All right, so it looks like we discover four random mundane consumables Good from job, that. Zeke. So uh, can you shuffle this, and then I'll randomly pick four as the yes. Zeke player. Yes. Let's hope it's not another arrow. Well, arrows. And maybe like a bow to shoot the arrow. Okay, so I have to fan it. Let's see what's in this care package. So, you know, how about when we fan it, I'll never pick the top card. Okay. So this way you don't have to worry about okay. covering that top card up. So this one, we've got some bottled blessing. Okay. At any time, an ally within SOI may do one of the following. Either heal three, reroll any dice you just rolled, or gain one SP. That's worth six gold. Okay. Okay, our mundane uh, vitality juice box. Another box. Which we cover three, which we have those. Okay. And... Another, another juice, juice box. box. And one more. Oh, four. Yeah. Oh, okay, four. Got it. Something different. Nope. MP fortitude. All right. Well, hey, these that's are okay. All that worth... means that we don't have to. We have a steady supply of yeah of stuff, exactly. and we that... can spend our money on maybe new gear. Exactly. This is sixteen gold right here. That's okay. basically what we found in the mission. I think I think it was sixteen gold. Or twenty. Okay, twenty. So uh, yeah, hey, now we we can freely use these. I like. We got some backup. So I just read the Enchanted Arrows card that Andrea pulled before, and there's actually a passive ability. This card is drawn as a reward from an adventure mechanic you may redraw. So I guess this is um, allowing you, like when you pull it from the chest like we did, because uh, we can't really use this. I'm pretty sure that's what combo archery means. We must have a bow, and you would purchase arrows if you actually had a bow. It gives us a chance to basically redraw. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Let's shuffle this up. And a mundane consumable is a ubiquitous plank. Okay, so this is worth 10 gold right here. Uh, discard, you may do one of the following. Deal a purple die of physical damage to an adjacent opponent. Place a plank token on an adjacent space. Or reduce physical damage dealt to you by two. So I guess we've got this board. You either whack somebody with it create a little uh, a walkway, or maybe have somebody punch it and get some blocks. So this is actually pretty cool. I, I like this much better than the arrow, which apparently we probably couldn't have even used in the first place. Zeke walked the perimeter of the cave, scraping along the rock with a wooden pole he'd taken from their camping supplies. Where the gloom concealed, he used the pole to check for danger. There was no way to guess what the proctors might try to throw at them. Giant rats set loose into the camp while they slept? Pipes to flood the cave? Whatever the Alinea Institute had planned for them, Zeke intended to be ready. He didn't find any secret passages, hidden traps, or insidious ways to torment them in their sleep. As he neared the end of the search, he struck a section of rough wall that thumped strangely when he just hit it right. Hey guys, I think there's something here, he called back before dropping onto his knees and feeling around the wall. 
After a few seconds, he felt a little lever give way under his touch. Zeke flinched, half expecting a trap, but instead a thin facade retracted from the wall, revealing a tightly wrapped bundle. He kicked gingerly at it, sending it rolling out of the opening and onto the floor in front of him without exploding, shooting acid or sending spikes at him through the floor. He grinned, lifting the tightly wrapped bundle of burlap and holding it up for the rest of his team to see. Hey, everybody, I found a care package. Nice work, Rook called, not rising from his work around their makeshift fire pit. They must have hidden some supplies like this for the groups who actually pay attention. I think this was an easy first mission. Well, I... I would assume so, too. Even our characters feel that it was too easy. Right. Based on the amount of monsters we had to fight right. in the practice one that we did, um, yeah, this was, this was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I think this was a pretty simple one. Um, if we need... Bef- during the encounter, the match will be great on how many encounters... Blah, 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 blah. Your score for each encounter can never fall below zero. So our first encounter... We're going to keep the score because we have to track this at in this So sheet we back here. have 12 points plus the, because we did less than eight rounds. Mm-hmm. And then we have a automatic plus two for the bonus so that's and 10. the loot. So that's 10. And then for every uh, cave sickle that was defeated, which was. We didn't keep track. Didn't, definitely did not keep track of that. I think there were four to begin with. And then, because there was one here uh-huh. on the, and then there were two, so there's six. We killed, we killed six of them. I think three spawned because there were oh, two three, here three, and three, one. Three, three. Okay, so seven. So seven, so fourteen, so twenty-four points is our grade. More than that, twelve. Twelve plus two is fourteen. Fourteen and fourteen is twenty-eight. Correct. Don't know what that means. But right now, we've got a score of 28. It's positive, so I'm happy with that. Yes. There's no negative numbers. So that is, uh, that's the that's the mass day one. So apparently there's a mass day two that we're going to figure out how we get there. Mm-hmm. That's going to be on our next episode. Uh, but yeah, I think this was... Uh, a nice warm-up. A nice warm-up. And it allowed me to teach you the rules and how it's going to play. Plus, it gives me the ability to now go back and figure out... Look up everything that we didn't know, dodging. The, the timing of the dodging, exactly. Uh, you know, did he get the attack of opportunity when I went through you? Can I even move through you uh, using this diagonal? I think that guy? one is... I think you I can, guess. because this allows you to... Um, even though it's two movement points to move through you, this kind of overwrites it because it's like a special movement. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure we can do that. Well, it's kind of the same way with flying. It is kind of like the same way as flying, but I do a sword dance instead of using wings. Okay. Right? Sword dance. Right? I'm glad we didn't use any of our... Uh, consumables. Consumables. We got two... You got a silly, silly arrow, but that's all right. Um, someday we'll probably use it. Someday. Uh, I do like that we are able to use some magic. We tried that out. And we got 20 gold, oh. but... We can't spend it yet because technically this really isn't over. Correct. Well, we've got 20 gold. A restore means, again, we get all of our health back. Mm-hmm. Um, these, this gold will go back into the deck. Okay. Uh, but a store has not been set up yet, so we can't go shopping. Hence, because we're still down in the dungeon. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, let's kind of do a little recap. We are going to be doing this campaign of Madara going forward as long as there's, of course, viewers like you who are watching this and enjoying and and want to learn the story along with us. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we're looking forward to do the next episode is uh, 30 thumbs up in this episode. Um, Again, if you're not subscribed with us, definitely do that because uh, that's really what's driving us to keep doing this. And you're going to see all of our episodes as they come out. You'll get that notification. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I had one more thing. Right. So I would like oh to. So this is going to be. This is going to be tough. I haven't told this one yet. It's going to be tough. Why I said, "Oh boy." Right. Uh, I I think it was really good when we were in a routine when we did our big campaign with uh, Kingdom Death. We always had new episodes on Friday. Right. So I would like to do a new episode of Mandara. What what day of the week? Oh, is that? Is yeah, I'm not waiting me? for an answer over here. Uh, I don't care. Fridays are fine with me. M. Monday Madara. Oh, Monday. 
Monday Madara. You mean Madara Mondays? That actually sounds a lot better. Mm -hmm. Madara Mondays. I'm the writer in the family. So, uh, this one should be coming out. I don't know when this will be coming out, but not Monday. So, it will be coming out Monday. No, it won't be coming out. April. Mm -hmm, No. I'm going to try and get this out ahead of time so that Madara Monday we can get another episode in. No, 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 no. No, we got to bank this. We'll see what happens. Because what happens if we don't get 30 likes by that Monday? That's a good point. Then you won't be getting it So that Monday. this episode will be coming out Monday, April, the day after Easter. But you already know that because you're watching it on that day. Maybe. Monday, what is today? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Monday, April 21st. It's possible. No, 20... I don't know. Oh, you're the writer in the family. I'm not the mathematician. I can't count. What is today? The 17th? Yeah. 18, so, 19, watching The 22nd, 422. Our episode of Madara. Earth Day. I will be looking forward to <laughs> Madara Mondays now. As long as you are, you know. Did you have a good time? I had an amazing time. I love my characters. Yeah, your character is pretty sweet. I, I like mine too. So, okay. uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, let us know what you think of the game. Have you tried it yourself? And uh, hopefully, you're with us for the long haul, at least until we, we lose and, and have a horrible death and fail, or we win this campaign. Yes, one that's or the right. other. There you go. We'll see you next time.